Back when I first beat Minos Prime and cleared P1, I honestly thought I'd never P rank it. I figured, what's the point if it doesn't get me anything? I can be a completionist at games sometimes, but with Ultra Kill being a yet unfinished game and me feeling like I had at that point basically completed everything that there was so far, I didn't see the point, especially if it was going to require hours of practice and suffering to do something that was basically just for bragging rights. That was until the comments started rolling in. And from that moment, I knew I had to at least give it a shot. So that was exactly what I did. And I documented on my Twitch stream my entire process from clearing P1 on Violet for the first time through all of my attempts and practice all the way to P ranking the level with an honestly respectable time. And that was the best feeling in the world. And even though I now can practically P rank Minos with a sub two minute time without hardly batting an eye, I still think back often to how good that initial P rank felt. And I understood why so many people had pushed me to go for that P rank. And I knew from that moment on, I would do it for every level and every future Prime Sanctum in this game, at least to the best of my abilities. But I thought the mountain I had to climb from starting the game to P ranking what was at the time the game's hardest level and boss was the hardest thing I would ever do in the game. I was so, so wrong. Fast forward to P2's release, and although I knew I wasn't going to have an easy time with the level, I expected my 100 or so hours of improvement would have made the level comparatively easier than my 100-some total attempts on P1. Instead, it took me 6 hours, almost as much as the 8 hours or so I spent total on stream trying to P-rank P1. And for a while, I genuinely didn't know if I should even pursue P-ranking this level at all, for my own sanity. But at the end of a video in which I publicly showed my experience dying almost a thousand times in P2, I announced my intention to P rank it. You can only imagine what kind of reception this was met with, but yet I was determined. I practiced the level a little bit about a week after my first full clear of it. Safe to say it didn't go great, but I got competent enough at Sisyphus that it at least didn't take hours to beat him this time. But then life got in the way, I had other obligations, I got sick a few times in short succession, and before I knew it, I hadn't made any progress on P2 in well over a month. But then June rolled around, I gave the level a few more tries, and the pieces really started to click together a little better, and I decided it was time to get serious about going for the P rank. Now when I made the P rank Minos Prime video, I had no idea how long it would take or how difficult that undertaking would be. I streamed the entire experience from front to back, I crammed like 8 hours of stream all into one 40 minute video, and called it a day. But when it came to P2, I already knew I had my work cut out for me. So since P ranking this level involved a significant off stream training arc, this video is going to be a little different. I don't know if I want to call this a tutorial because that it isn't. But it's somewhere between a straight up documentation of my experience, as most of my past Ultra Kill videos have been, and I guess a bit of a tutorial, or at least a rundown of what I personally did to approach P ranking P2. If nothing else, for the amount of people I've seen say they think they will never be able to P rank this level, I thought maybe just hearing and seeing my process of learning it might be helpful, and if not, I hope it's at least entertaining. So let's do it. To start off, if I had one piece of wisdom that I needed to hammer into my own head and can impart onto others, it's that having a strategy for every room and encounter in this level was of the utmost importance for me. I've been able to P-rank most levels in this game by just playing quickly and generally well. The same is not true for P2, at least for me. My chances of surviving here were so much higher if I just stuck to a strategy for every single room that was comfortable and felt relatively safe for me. Trying to do anything particularly flashy or having to go off book usually reduce my chances of success significantly. Now your strategy might look different from mine, but I'm going to describe what worked for me. Now when it comes to learning the actual level itself, my first order of business was to learn how to fight Sisyphus. I know this might seem counterintuitive in a lot of ways, but it made sense for me. I had the steepest hill to climb with Sisyphus, no pun intended, since he had killed me hundreds of times for like four straight hours on my first run through the level. But I felt weirdly like learning him would be far easier than the arena gauntlet. And I was pretty much spot on about that. Within just a few days of practice, I was able to get myself from hundreds of deaths on the big man to just a handful each time I attempted. There was some confounding variables here, like Sisyphus receiving a significant change since my first play playthrough that allowed him to be parried in phase two, and also a door right 
here that allows you to skip right to the boss to practice him quite easily. Once you've encountered him once at least. As I was going to chip away at learning this level, I figured that if I couldn't get to the point where I felt even remotely confident on Sisyphus, there was no point in learning everything prior to it anyways. Beyond that, the Flesh Panopticon was mostly a non-issue. I only died to it a couple times on my first playthrough, and that was basically just because it took me a few attempts to understand the gimmick. And beyond that, not to say it couldn't happen, but I'd only really die to it if I got really careless on repeat playthroughs. Basically, you can just break the eyes as quickly as possible and focus on surviving until Sisyphus breaks out. You can speed up the process by doing some damage. I recommend setting up a saw trap before the eyes even spawn that will start to chip it down right away. And if you can whiplash on top of it, you can get some more damage in there as well. The mortars and virtue beams do a good bit of damage if they hit you, and you definitely don't want to get hit by the black hole. But, and I say this without a shred of irony, just don't get hit. It's advice that's often easier said than done, but when it comes to the Flesh Pan Opticon, it really kind of is just that easy most of the time. While I couldn't let my guard down too much, knowing I likely wouldn't have to worry about too many runs being ended by the Pan Opticon was actually a welcome change from P1, where Flesh Prison honestly ended more runs than Minos. So now the issue, in my mind, was the Arena Gauntlet. And in particular, a couple rooms figured to give me the most trouble. The first room with the four Cerberus and Fairyman was not one of my biggest concerns, but it had killed me a few times in my first playthrough. Mainly, the reason for this was just shock, but as soon as I had a semblance of strategy, I got through it pretty quickly. That said, my practice revealed this room to be considerably dangerous still if I wasn't careful. Strategically, it's fairly simple, but it's shockingly easy to slip up and die in this room anyways due to how cramped and chaotic it is. The idea was to get rid of the Cerberus as fast as possible. This meant starting with a nuke or a rail coin doing big damage to them, chipping them down further with the rocket launcher and SRS cannon, and then laying down a saw trap to finish them off and hopefully do a significant amount of damage to the ferryman that spawns. At this point, the room is a race for survival. Kill the ferryman before the virtues enrage and deal with the virtues, which are pretty easily dispatched with a rail cannon charge, over pump, or whatever, honestly. Once they're isolated, they're really not too much of a threat. Likewise, the next arena is not a huge issue in the grand scheme either. It introduces the first idled Mind Flayer, but most of the rest of the enemies don't present too much of a threat, and there's enough space to work with, something most of the rest of the level does not afford you. Sentries are going to be my first big priority here, because left unchecked, two sentries will absolutely do enough damage to kill me quickly. But they're pretty stationary, their attacks can be cancelled in a number of ways, and the only other thing that is absolutely essential is just to kite the swords machine and make sure he doesn't corner and kill you. Starting off with a nuke and then laying down a saw trap will do wonders against both it and the handful of schisms in this arena as well. The name of the game with all these high health enemies is just DPS output, honestly. Keep one eye on the Mind Flayer, respond to what it's doing when necessary, a parry will refill your health and stamina, and while it's less essential for this arena, getting used to doing this is going to help a ton for the next big arena especially. Now on the way to the idols, there's this little hallway fight that throws a few street cleaners and a Cerberus at you, in addition to the Mind Flayer that is still following you. The truth is, this little hallway kinda sucks. It's one of my least favorite rooms in the level, and it felt like getting through it was a matter of luck a lot of times. It's very easy to get into an awkward position and die without really doing too much wrong, because you just don't really have the maneuverability you'd like to deal with the enemies it throws at you. Deal with the street cleaners first with coins, pray your coins don't hit the Mind Flayer instead, and then try and output as much DPS as possible on this Cerberus before he can juggle you back to the Mind Flayer or whatever. Easier said than done, and I'm trying to save my Rail Cannon charge here because I like to start the next room off by using it, but hitting him with the SRS will do good damage, and then honestly, I like to try and bait the Mind Flayer's attacks into the Cerberus, which can often just insta-kill it. If not, you can probably just kill it yourself at that point, but it's fun and satisfying to pull off, and it really simplifies what is otherwise an annoying little trap of a room. The next arena was going to be maybe my biggest hurdle of all when it came to P-ranking this level. Possibly even more so than the big man himself, it was by far the most challenging part of the arena gauntlet on my first playthrough, and basically every other subsequent playthrough. Through my practice, I developed a strategy that I felt was pretty sound, but it simply wasn't enough to just have a strategy. I needed to not only execute it pretty much perfectly, but to be spot on in my moment-to-moment -moment gameplay as well, and even, honestly, get a pinch lucky sometimes to get through this one without dying. 
thing. Here's how it ought to go. Deal with the sentry right away. I started off by trying to nuke it, but I found out later down the line that a fully charged slab piercer and an electric rail would do the job as well. Then, I set down a saw trap to deal with the swords machines. Kiting the swords machines and responding to the mind flayers, maybe trying to bait their attacks into the swords machines if given the opportunity, and basically just focusing on surviving here is the name of the game. When the swords machines are dealt with, a wave of two Maurices and two Virtues will spawn. At this point, my hope is that my rail cannon is back up so I can insta-kill one of the Virtues. This arena really does not have the space to adequately just avoid overlapping Virtue beams, so just getting rid of them as quickly as possible was of the utmost importance for me. And there are a few simpler ways to deal with them than just a single shot from the blue rail cannon. The other one, of course, was going to be a little more complicated, but a fully overpumped green shotgun ought to do the trick as well. The Maurices are, of course, straightforward, but still dangerous as ever. Especially if you aren't immediately focusing on them, I just try to stay airborne and mobile so they have a hard time catching me off guard. Deal with the Virtues swiftly, and then use tried and true strategies to get rid of the Maurices. This may all seem relatively straightforward, but the amount of stuff that can go wrong and snowball into death in this fight at any given point is extremely high. Not to mention during all of this you're trying to juggle two invincible mind flayers. The best thing to do is just keep one eye on them and parry them often. It keeps the stamina up, keeps the health topped off, and avoids damage from their projectiles. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that it's basically necessary to survive this fight with any measure of consistency. When this wave is dealt with, the idols will open. You can break them, giving yourself a heal, and finally leaving the Mind Flayers vulnerable. I found I had a bad habit of getting complacent at the end of this fight. The amount of times I died to these two Mind Flayers was honestly ridiculous, considering this should have been the easiest part of the fight. The only thing I'll say about this is that even though the challenge of finishing off these two Mind Flayers pales in comparison to what comes before it, they're still incredibly formidable opponents, and they demand respect even when they're the only enemy in the arena. A few times you might see me use the screwdriver on them. Normally I don't use this weapon at all, nothing wrong if you do of course, but in this particular situation I think it's useful for a couple reasons. It prevents the Mind Flayer from teleporting, allowing me to focus my fire on just one of them. Then I basically only have to worry about one Mind Flayer teleporting around, behind me, or whatever. This will also make sure my health stays up so I'm not going into the next arenas weakened, and I can't stress enough, survival is by far the hardest part of P-ranking this level, and especially this arena. So, I don't really feel bad about relying on the screwdriver to take me home here, even if it maybe isn't 100% no. necessary. Beyond no. my first tango no. with Sisyphus, no. No. I no. honestly considered no. and no. still consider this to be by far the hardest part of the level. So even just getting past it with some degree of consistency was a huge win for me. That's not to say there was nothing else I had to worry about in the rest of the level, Level, but getting past this huge hurdle was an important moment in any of my P-Rank runs. Now, despite my, uh, well-documented struggles with the Insurrectionist duo in 6-1, the Insurrectionist duo here might honestly be the easiest part of the level. The SRS cannon has a lot to do with trivializing the difficulty of it, since it can knock them over and basically stun lock them, but it's also pretty easy to just corral them in this relatively tight space, get them both in saw traps, hit them with a rail coin, etc. I'm not saying these two insurrectionists are an easy fight by any stretch, but since the difficulty of P2 is so high across the board, this part of the level feels pretty straightforward and consistent compared to the rest of the level. The next arena is one of the most divisive in the level, and I totally understand the frustration with it, but I do think there's a strategy that pretty easily trivializes it. Nukes. It's, it's just nukes. That's the whole strategy. Okay, it's a little easier said than done, but basically what you want to do is nuke this first room, which will knock the virtues into the damaging walls of the blood tunnel, basically instantly finishing them off. This leaves you with just two Maurices and a sentry. I try to get to the sentry fast enough to cancel its attack with a hit from the Knuckle Blaster, but usually I have enough time to deal with one of the Maurices first. Be careful not to trigger the next room's enemies just yet. With the sentry out of the way, the remaining Maurice should be no problem, especially after being softened by the nuke. Just be careful not to fall off as you're getting to him. When it comes to the next room, I again start off with a nuke. It has a little bit more mixed results in this room. You don't usually get the satisfaction of an insta-kill, and the damage to the Cerberus duo won't kill them, but you should be able to finish them off really quickly with an SRS boulder or even just some rockets, which just leaves the Maurice, basically. If the sentries are still alive somehow, the shockwave from the Maurice falling will knock them off. Really, the frustration of these arenas for most people probably comes from the fact that movement is inherently risky here, since a wrong step or a blindside hit from a Cerberus or something like that will knock you right into the damaging walls and floor. As a result, it's one of the few times in the entire game that I actually think playing extremely safe and using cover to your advantage is the best strategy, which is weirdly a rarity for Ultra Kill, but hey, if it works, it works. 
and then onto the final arena. And while on paper, this is one of the toughest arenas in the level and honestly the entire game, I found this was maybe the single room in this level that benefited the most from having a strategy for it, to the point where it almost completely trivialized it for me. This room spawns three very formidable and individually tough waves of enemies, back to back to back, while you also have to deal with an invincible stalker sanding enemies to prevent your healing. It sounds awful, and it kinda is, but just a few things really make this arena remarkably less of a problem than others in this level. For one, you can knock the stalker into the air using the rocket launcher. Not only is this hilarious, but it's useful for buying you some time to deal with enemies before they all get sanded by this bozo. The first wave is really just a DPS fest. Lay down your saws, focus your fire on the higher health enemies, use the less aggressive strays for healing if needed, and juggle the stalker to whatever extent you can to avoid the awkwardness of a sanded swords machine or fairy man, and just survive. The next wave is a lot tougher, but also benefits strongly from just executing a strategy with confidence. For me, that is just wasting no time dealing with the sentries as soon as they spawn. You won't be able to get all four before they fire off a shot, but with a combo of shotguns, the knuckle blaster, and quick pistol shots to cancel problematic upcoming shots, I find they really don't take too much to topple. The nice thing too is that whiplashing between them has two benefits. Getting to a sentry quick will allow you to start dealing damage to them and cancel their charge up with a punch from the knuckle blaster, but being mid whiplash also also basically just makes other sentries that might be targeting you miss. It's weird, but whiplashing is really quite safe in this arena, and if you're worried, you can also iframe an oncoming attack mid-whiplash. Oh yeah, there's a hideous mass here too. It's idled, and it's very likely to get sanded when you're dealing with the sentries. Don't worry about that. Yes, I am telling you not to worry about an idled, sanded, hideous mass, but don't worry about it. After dealing with the sentries, I'm faced with the most pivotal moment of this arena. Three Cerberus and three Virtues will spawn. You essentially must deal with the Virtues first, as quickly as you possibly can. A Rail Cannon charge to kill one before they even fire is basically essential. The others can be dealt with by overpump shotguns, knuckle blaster, etc. You know the drill. But getting one of the three out of the way immediately was paramount for my survival in this arena. The good news is after you return to Earth, you can break the hideous mass idol. The bad news is probably everything will be sanded at this point. But if you stand on the top level of the arena where the sentries spawned in, you basically just avoid all of hideous mass's shockwaves except for the vertical one, which is pretty easy to avoid anyways. Take the rocket launcher and just chip away at the Serbs. I tend to like to break the idol for the hideous mass so that I can chip away at it as well but sometimes I like to evaluate my health situation and save the full heal from the idol for when I need it. Name of the game here is just not panicking, minimize the damage you take, and just deal with the remaining threats from a safe distance, especially since healing off them likely won't be an option at this point. Break the stalker idol when you can and style on that worthless bastard however you please, and then move on to the big finale. At this point, the hardest part of the level is basically done. It's not that Sisyphus is like a joke in difficulty, but it's quite a bit easier to predict and ultimately trivialize one enemy, even a really tough one, than an entire arena full of them. So it's a good thing I practiced Sisyphus a lot and got really good at him, right? Right? So, here's the deal with Sisyphus. I was quickly able to get my deaths to him down from hundreds to more like tens per each kill. But 10 or so deaths for every one kill was not at all good odds for a P rank, and I hit a wall hard here for some reason. I felt like I more or less understood his entire moveset and could dodge or parry everything in a vacuum, but I just found myself getting overwhelmed when I fought him with the entire combination of trying to dodge and parry his attacks, not panicking when I did get hit or juggled by him, and still dealing solid and consistent damage to chip away at his honestly massive health bar. If this describes you as well, I might have some advice. For me, all I really needed to do was just to simplify this fight down to the most basic level. Sisyphus is faster and more relentless than basically any other ultra kill boss up to this point, but the way that you fight him is not different. There's no real special strat or gimmick to beating or trivializing him, you just gotta hold your ground, get in healing range when possible, respond to his moves, and just not panic. But if on an individual level you can dodge or parry an attack, you can fight Sisyphus. The way I approached hammering this into my brain was by starting parry only. The only way I allowed myself to damage Sisyphus was by parrying him. His parryable attacks are abundant, and while they're chained together fast and occasionally individually demanding to dodge or parry, tackling the attack that is right in front of you is way easier than trying to do a million things at once. 
Then I'd add a weapon, like shotguns, for example, and I'd find the windows where I could comfortably deal some damage to Sisyphus without immediately being punished. And then I'd add something more complex, like saw traps, focus on the attacks that had windows where I could lay a trap down, and then which could be kited through traps for good damage. And then once I felt comfortable with that, I added every last bit of cheese I had, coin ads and whatnot, and found, lo and behold, Sisyphus was suddenly a lot easier for me. Even though I didn't have a specific breakthrough or anything, I just found that by breaking it down on an individual level like this, it made me way more confident at fighting him. At this point, I was reliably killing him maybe 50% of the time, and I had done deathless runs to the boss tandem multiple times, and I figured it was time to start attempting the full level P rank. My first result on P2, 968 restarts. <laughs> so, some time has passed since this happened. I've played the level a few more times. Here, for example, is me practicing Sisyphus, just Sisyphus, with 118 restarts. I think some of these were voluntary restarts, but hey, listen, it was progress. And then here was my second full clear of the level. And then at this point, I think I took about a two month break from P2. And then I came back, but lo and behold, a little bit better. 26 restarts, not bad, not bad. And then a little bit better, 11 restarts. Hey, I'll take that. That's not too bad at all. Wait, what's this? Five restarts? And then? One restart. Um, so this is where I'm at. So the idea today is just to play through the level, not necessarily try to P rank and just get more consistent at my strats. What am I doing even? See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Now all of a sudden I'm like, forget everything I practice. Yeah, yeah, great. Really, you didn't get hit? All right, this is going swimmingly so far. I hate this room, honestly. Genuinely despise it. Oh, you're you're still alive? Hello? <laughs> I find that nuking pretty consistently kills that guy, but it's not it's not super consistent. I'm dead. I'm not dead. Not recharged. Great. This fucking room, dude. I hate it. Oh come on, come on. I'm fucking dead, bro. Where are you at? <laughs> I blew myself up. <laughs> Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. There we go. Hello. What? Why? Bro, why is that parry so inconsistent? I almost never fucked that up. Great, 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 great. This is wonderful. I'm having a good time, mind players. Wow, how do I keep fucking that up? Uh, hello? Dude, whiplash! Excuse me? Whiplash work even one time challenge? Impossible? <laughs> okay, that works. All right, we take that. Oh, come on. There we go. Fucking finally, dude. Don't die to these bozos. Actually, easiest part of the level. I, I don't understand why, but it is. No, okay. Woo! It wasn't charged! Wait, no, that- that fucking sucks. Alright, not too bad. Yeah, I don't know, this room just comes easy to me for some reason. This prison to hold easy boss, easy life. Oh, fuck. Okay. No! There we go. Wow, I can't believe I missed that. Oh, I'm in it. I'm in it. Fuck, dude. Wait, we're fine. We're fine. I should parry be gone. I know how to. I'm just bad at it. Yeah, baby!
All right, so what's my problem, guys? What's my problem? It's literally just the Mind Flayer room. <laughs> but why, bro? Why? Why does that room have to be like that? I died, uh, I died once on the Blood Tunnel, but otherwise it was just Mind Flayer room. I'll take six. That's not bad. This, this room is an issue, though. That much I will say. Ah, there it is. The I can't see anything hallway, exactly. Last try is that time. Let's just do this. No, what? Why didn't that heal? Why didn't that heal me? Eh, whatever. I'm not too worried about this room. <laughs> whatever, man. <laughs> not my finest performance on that last wave, but... I'm dead. <laughs> okay, I... That pattern kind of sucked, but I, I should have dealt with it a lot better. You're done, right? You're done, right? Hello? <laughs> okay, that was weird. Railcoin should heal us. Oh, weird, the slide... Oh, wrong fist! This is a bummer. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. I just forgot to change the fucking fist. Good scissors practice. Oh, hello. Apparently I need it too, cause goddamn. Well now it's time to struggle on Sisyphus. Ugh. Wah. I'm dead. I'm not dead? Oh, I I went way too early there. No! Oh, now I just can't beat him. Wasn't having any trouble with this part yesterday. <laughs> Fuck it, dude. We'll do one more run through the level, and then that's that's it for today, I think. Where's the other one? I don't have it! Okay, that's fine. Okay. Could one of you just die? Holy shit, I can screwdriver again if I want. There we go, they both died at the same time. Okay, okay! That's a bummer. I'm not saying it was definitely going to happen, but that's a bummer to be my first death. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Coming back in for attempt two. I can't, I can't, I can't. I've lost it. I've lost it for today, chat. So, uh, yeah. I didn't necessarily think I'd get the P rank on this stream. The point was really just to show my progress and get a little practice in and just chat about P2 after I had some more time with it and remind people that I hadn't given up on P ranking this. But man, this went way worse than I hoped. And even though there was highlights here and there, like a first try Sisyphus and a run that went deathless up to the blood tunnel, it was clear that overall I needed way more practice and maybe some strategy adjustments. But perhaps much, much more importantly, I had another trick up my sleeve. Bingo. It's, it's just, it's bingo again. If you've seen my P1 P rank video, you'll know that bingo was my last resort attempt to shake myself out of a slump I had fallen into via the looming threat of uh, having to read terrible ultra kill fan fiction live on stream should I mess up enough times. The reality was that this had the intended effect and I got the P rank 30 minutes into the stream and bingo ended up being kind of a non-factor. This time, things were a little different. I had already spent quite a bit of time practicing off stream. I had strategies that I knew were capable of carrying me through every arena, but the trouble was executing them all in one run and then also not dying to the incredibly demanding final boss, a task far harder and more unpredictable than just learning and having one good run against the Flesh Prison and Minos. But as soon as I felt like I was getting close to being able to P-rank the level, I'd get the bingo ready and take things to stream with the threat of punishment should I fail. 
At one bingo, I'd give subs and allow chat to annoy me with one hour of media share. At two bingos, I shave the beard. At three bingos, I play any one game of chat's choosing. I hoped I wouldn't need more than that, but there was, at this point, one of two ways this could go. Either it'd be time to string together the perfect run or face the consequences. All right, let's do it. Um, remember my strategy. That's an important part. Um, okay, he's dead. I like to over pump these guys. Huh, not what I meant to do. Okay, I did not hit the checkpoint. Hopefully that doesn't matter. Yikes, I'm gonna die. Clutch parry, Jesus Christ. Okay. Wow, that was fast. No! Shit, I should've used the rail cannon. Alright, alright, that's fine, that's fine. No, 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 no. I'm gonna I'm gonna get Weezered. No, I'm not. I will not get Weezered. Woo! Hi, you're alive still. Okay, that's fine. I refuse to get Weezered. Wee oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh come on. Recharge! Why am I too fast? There it is. Okay, never mind, I guess. Where is he? She. Whatever you are, you're dead. Don't forget the skull. Yikes. I mean, genuinely, that's kind of the hardest part of the level over. That's not to say I can't die on the rest of the level, but... Oh, shit. Okay, we're good. We take those. No, not that. Not that. This. Go to space. I thought you were dead, to be honest, so... Go, 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 go. Shit. Can you die? There we go. Woo, okay. Yeah, I think I'll be okay on style. It would suck if I wasn't, but I think I'll be okay. Just don't do something stupid like dying to Panopticon. Okay, get out of that, hello? Oh my God, it's actually gonna happen, isn't it? No, we're good, we're good. Oh, shit, that's not parryable. Oh my god, I'm, I'm panicking. I'm dead. No, we're good, we're good, we're good. Fine, it's fine. I'm dead. Uh-oh. I'm going to die in here. If I don't. I hate this fucking room, dude! This room is cursed! We're good? No, this one's alive. I thought he was dead. I just couldn't see him is all. Oh wow, he's using the screwdriver! Cringe! You must be some kind of noob! I'll just get it out of the way for you, chat. I don't care. The best is when they teleport away from my rocket. Two? More like P. I want two strong bongo myself. <laughs> dude, me too. Holy shit, based. How Ultra Kill's hardest level strong bongled me. Video title. That's okay. I'm alright with face tanking that. <laughs> huh. No. Okay. Saved? <laughs> the server is still alive? No, he's not. Stay on, stay on, stay on. That was almost death. That was almost death again. Holy. Just dash! Just dash! Just fucking dash! Oh, I was harpooned. I didn't even notice. Holy shit. Does that count as a death to my own explosion? I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I think I'll count it. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not gonna have it. Okay, that's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah, that is a problem. All right, that's two deaths in a row in that arena. Fuck. Yeah, ah, man, what am I doing? What am I doing? What the fuck am I doing? I'm starting to get angry, boys. We could make it, you could make me play Garden, Garden of Bad Bad for three bingos, you're right. Let's get to one and two bingos consecutively first before we start worrying about Garden of Bad Bad. No fan fiction. Don't put that evil on me. Uh, I put the skull back. I put the skull back. 
In case you're wondering how I'm doing mentally, I put the skull back. That almost killed me. I just have a habit of blowing those up because it's funny. <laughs> no! Shit, 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 shit. I'm dead. I'm actually dead. I'm not dead. I tried to do funny and I almost died. That's what I get. No, that's so much shit sanded. Okay. All right, I have to be really careful now. Oh, that did it. Okay. We good? No sentry deaths this time. Okay. Gotta get over here. Okay, we're fine. Jesus Christ. There we go. There we go. Hello? Okay. Like, no health, but that's fine. Okay, I can get 6k on the, on the boss, I think. No, I'm not gonna have it. I'm dead. Dude, no! I didn't have enough style! Bro! Oh, it actually was a problem, and that's a bingo, too. All right, let's mark the fucking square. This is definitely where I'm getting hit, I can tell you that much. Go, dude, go. Nope. Nice, dude, why? why? The, that attack is so stupid. And why are you still alive? I fucking hate that room. God, that is actually the worst room in the level. Get me the fuck out of there. We're good. We're good. We're good. All right. No, no five deaths in a row to this. I'll take it. You dead? Okay, we're good. That was clean. Now I gotta wait. I'm gonna die to this dude, if I'm not careful. Oh my. Oh my, I didn't hear that one charging up. Shit. The toughest part about this level isn't just like learning how to play it, it's doing it all at once. It's so hard. Key ranking this level kind of demands consistent- <laughs> Holy shit, I don't even know what weapon I have out, that's great. I have a fuck ton of hard damage. Who needs health anyways? I'm dead. <laughs> nice, I have no health. Wow, poggers. At least that one's already checked off. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Dude, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. The problem now isn't making it past the Mind Flayer room, it's making it to it. Would you get out? You body blocking the schism. Holy shit, dude. I, sh I was gonna try to shoot those, but I don't know what I was thinking, honestly. Okay. We're fine. Subscribe to Dumper, man. Yo, suggested, thank you for the... Thank you for the 14, what the fuck? What the... Does that count as a death? Okay, they followed me. All right, whatever. I'm just gonna keep going. Hope for the best. I, I, I didn't dash. Why didn't I dash? Why didn't I dash? Where the fuck are they? Hello? Okay, I'll take that. Very low HP though. I shouldn't have whiplashed. I should have just let it recharge. Dude, the way they fucking... I'm dead. Yeah, shit. Oh, one virtue still left. My game fucking froze. Oh, I broke the magnets. No. At least it wasn't from saw overload, but. I still shouldn't have done that. I still should not have done that. Okay, I need a break. Ah, 
I punched. I swear I punched. No! It, they batted me past it, bro. That's four. This could be number five in this room, unfortunately. Yeah, there it is. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I hate this game. I hate this level. I hate that fucking enemy. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it! Jesus Christ, bro. I do love that you can whiplash through their projectiles when they first fire them. At least top off my health. Christ. Okay. This has been kind of a scuffed run overall. Where's the spawn trigger? I forgot the skull. That's all right. I don't have to restart, but... <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I need health? Badly. What am I doing, dude? Quick sanity check. Not good, boss. Not good. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What? Okay. I'm at least getting to this room consistently. For whatever that's worth. So bad. I'm so bad. I have so much hard damage. It's fucking Jover. It's never Jover till it's Jover. I am not by done. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on, can we just get through this room once? Oh no, the answer is no. Uh oh. The answer is no because I completely fucked up. How much health do you fuckers have? Okay, we're through it. And that's all that matters. Wow, that was lucky attack RNG right there. Uh-oh. Serve is still alive. We're good. Oh, shit. Hello! Okay, that was a really good heal. Oh, the other one was going. Okay. And that's no health. I thought that one was dead, dude. I thought that one was fucking dead. The laser in the back. I should have known. All right, I'll be right back. After my first brush with P2 went six hours, largely due to my refusal to set it down and come back after a break. Now nearing three straight hours of P rank attempts, I was once again confronted with the fact that my performance was suffering drastically the longer I beat my head against this wall. Nearing the end of the time I had planned for attempts on this day, I was starting to think about how I'd approach this P rank for future streams which I had figured were already a foregone conclusion after the way I'd failed to get a run going since I had two runs almost go the distance earlier on in the stream. Maybe I'd do more sessions of attempts, but in shorter bursts. I pondered this as I got up from my stream for a short break, figuring I had maybe one more good attempt at me for the day. I sat back down to give it another try, and then this happened. Yeah, I should review the bingo board and make sure I didn't miss anything before the stream is over. Can I get a heal? Who's left? It's always one schism, bro.
No, no, no. That was so clean, dude. I will fucking take that all day. Holy shit, I'm getting a phone call. Don't they know now is not the time? And style even lower this time. Shit. You too. You too, bucko. You too. No! Oh, at least he got knocked out of his attack. You're still alive. Okay, we're fine. We've, we had to improvise a little bit, but we're fine. That was good. It's looking good. It's just you, huh? Uh, I should kill you first. I make this mistake fairly often. Uh, what do you do about this again? There we go. Oop, hello. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, dude. Oh, that got both of them. Hell yeah. Oh my god, just fucking, yeah. Whew. Uh, get our shit ready. Don't think it. Don't say it. The people who come in now. We just skip past this now. I think we're good, right? This prison to hold. <sighs> Dude, it feels like it's been years since I fought Sisyphus. Ah, oh, shit, that one's not parryable. A little too early, that's fine. We're just gonna set this up. Where are you? I need health. No. Yes! 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 The life and times of King Fucking go! And I don't. Ah, I just needed one run. I just needed one good run, baby. All that dying to the mind flayers. Let's fucking go! Only needed one stream, baby. Woo! Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Let's fucking go. I thought this would take me way longer, dude. I'm so happy. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, there you have it. I think my takeaway from this experience is, well, a few things. First, half the battle of everything you do in this game, and maybe, honestly, in life, is fought in the mind. I went into P2 for the first time overconfident and it absolutely beat me down, leaving me feeling absolutely exhausted and completely unsure of my own skills. I could have rushed right into P ranking this level, but instead I took a months long break. I sat back and thought about my approach and only came back when I felt like I was really ready. And because of that, I honestly surprised myself. In my first clear of P2, I surprised myself with how underprepared and honestly shit I was. But when it came to P ranking, all it took in reality was about two good weeks of dedicated practice and attempts with the right mindset. And when I set my mind to it, I did surprise myself again, this time with how quickly I was able to conquer this level that I once thought unconquerable. It turns out, I still got it. Second, I was surprised by how unremarkable my P rank run honestly felt in comparison to my P1 run. It didn't really set in that I might be on the run until I was standing right in front of Sisyphus. And even still, it didn't quite set in that I had actually done it until a second after Sisyphus was dead. But when I watched this all back, I realized this isn't a bad thing. Through my countless attempts at P-ranking P1, I got so good at it that when I finally put it all together, I inadvertently speed ran the level in a kind of hilarious irony. 
P2 is just not the same thing at all. My strategies were safe and mostly focused on keeping me alive rather than doing anything quickly or in a flashy way. But when I watch back the run, what stands out the most to me compared to my other runs is the confidence with which I executed this strategy and my decision making. It is true that I didn't really attempt anything flashy, I just did what I needed to do. When I got off course, I quickly and confidently got things back on track, and while I didn't do it all especially fast and I just barely cracked the style requirement, I did it. And that's all that really matters. It's so easy to get wrapped up trying to look cool in this game that sometimes you forget you still have to do all the basic shit as well. I think nowhere is this better exemplified than in my fight with Sisyphus. I was so concerned that I would need to parry Sisyphus that I deliberately sat down and for hours practiced parrying ad nauseum. And then in my actual successful fight with him, I missed all but two of my parries, with one of those being a totally not accidental shotgun parry that dealt the final blow to him. Instead, my fight was defined by me just doing what I needed to do to survive exactly when I needed to do it. Even despite making mistakes, just standing tall, not panicking, and focusing on what I needed to do one moment at a time. As a result, while my fight with Sisyphus wasn't flashy, it looks almost effortless. Almost easy. A boss that had at one point kicked me around for several hundred attempts not that long ago, no less. So yeah. While I can safely say this is now by far the toughest thing I've accomplished in this game so far, I'm happy to hang my hat on the fact that I never gave up, let myself be discouraged or defeated, and overcame my toughest mental and mechanical challenge the game had presented me so far. And so, on to the next. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. All right. Smash that bell. Hit that hit bell this, button. Hit destroy the my bell pussy. button. Subscribe to Dumper Man. <laughs>